As we talk about motion, one of the things that's going to be important to us is how the velocity changes with respect to time. And so the way that we measure how the velocity changes with respect to time is by a quantity called acceleration. So specifically, acceleration is a measure of the change in the velocity of an object over the time interval in which that velocity changes. Now this is actually the average acceleration because we could look at a large time interval. But the smaller the time interval, the closer the acceleration will be to what the object is at that instant in time. When the velocity of an object changes very quickly with respect to time, we say that the object has a large acceleration, and when it changes more slowly, it has a smaller acceleration. So a good example of this is two cars waiting at a stoplight uh, together, and when the light turns green, one car just steps on the gas and goes very quickly from a starting position to a very fast velocity, while the other one steps on the gas but, um, but changes its velocity more slowly. So the one that uh, stepped on the gas and went speeding away has a large acceleration versus the car that um, took its time and um, had a smaller acceleration. So the formula that we use for acceleration is that the acceleration is the change in the velocity delta v over the time interval delta t. I do want to point out that acceleration is a vector quantity just like velocity is a vector quantity so it has both size and direction associated with it. And we'll see that in the next slides. Um, we can write the acceleration more explicitly as the change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity over some time t, where t is the time interval where the velocity changes. The units that we use for acceleration in physics are meters per second squared, but we could also use any units that have length over time squared, but um, like feet per second squared, centimeters per second squared, but the standard unit that we're going to use would be meters per second squared. So here we have an example where a car is actually speeding up and the car starts off with some initial velocity of positive 5 meters per second squared. The velocity is positive because the car is moving to the right, so this vector is pointing to the right. The final velocity of the car is 15 meters per second squared, also moving to the right. And the time interval for this car changing its velocity is 4 seconds. So we can determine what the acceleration of this car is by looking at how the velocity changes with respect to time. And we know that its final velocity is 15, its initial is 5, and so we take the difference in those two values and divide by the time interval of 4 seconds. We get 10 meters per second over 4 seconds, which is 2.5 meters per second squared. The fact that this quantity for the acceleration comes out to be a positive value means that my acceleration vector is positive or pointing to the right, and it has the same direction as the velocity vectors. So anytime an object is speeding up, the acceleration vector will be in the same direction as the velocity vector. When an object speeds up, it's always going to cover more distance every second that goes by because of the fact that the speed is increasing and speed measures, in general, distance covered over time. So here I have an object that starts from rest, and after one second it's traveling two meters per second. After two seconds it's traveling four meters per second. Three seconds it's traveling six, and then it's traveling eight. And what we notice is, is that over time, the distance that the object is covering between time intervals is increasing. And that will always be the case if an object is speeding up. We could always also look at what the graph of this position versus time graph would look like for these objects. And what we know is that when we look at position versus time graphs, the velocity of the graph can be determined by looking at the slope of the graph at any particular instant in time. And so in this particular case, the slope of the graph, this graph is actually getting more and more and more steep. So that means that my velocity is increasing over time because of that slope getting more steep over time. I can determine the fact that the slope is increasing over time by drawing steps in in equal time intervals. 
So I can do the, um, the run and then the rise. And remember, slope is the rise over the run. So I can do these steps between these equal time intervals. And I see that my steps are getting steeper, which means that my slope is also getting steeper over time. And then the steps here are actually the distance covered. So over in the first um, one second interval, it's a very small distance and then a greater distance over in the next between one and two seconds, and then between two and three seconds, I've got more distance covered and so on. So in this particular picture, the slope is positive and it's increasing. And so that means that, that you can replace the slope of the position versus time graph with velocity. And it tells me that the velocity would be positive and increasing with respect to time. So remember that if the velocity was constant, my position versus time graph would be a very straight line or a constant slope line. We can also have a situation where an object is slowing down. So in this particular case, um, the car is traveling to the right, but it has an initial velocity of 15, and then it has a final velocity of five, so it has slowed down. And the time interval is again four seconds. So I can determine the acceleration by looking at how the velocity changed with respect to time. This final was five, subtract off the initial, which was 15, divide by the time of four seconds, and I get a negative 2.5 meters per second squared. So this negative sign is basically telling me that the acceleration vector is pointing in the negative direction or to the left, and it's pointing in the opposite direction of the velocity vectors. So anytime the acceleration is pointing in the opposite direction of the velocity vectors, that means that the object will be slowing down. So when the object is slowing down, that means that it covers less distance every second because the speed is decreasing. So if I have an object that's starting off at a speed of eight meters per second at a time t equal to zero, and after one second it's only traveling six, and then after two seconds, four, three seconds, two, and then eventually it comes to rest after four seconds, you can see that the distance covered in the first time interval is much greater than the distance covered in the next time interval, and so on as we continue with this. So we can look at what the position versus time graph would look like if we had a situation where the object was slowing down. And what we see is that the graph of the position versus time graph is getting less and less steep over time. And so that means that the uh, slope of that graph is decreasing over time. So I can look at that slope by putting in my steps again, going over one second and then up to the point on the graph. And what I see is that if I look at the rise over the run, the rise over the run for this graph is decreasing over time, which means my slope is decreasing. And so whatever's happening to the slope of the position versus time graph, that's also what's happening to the velocity. So this is a positive slope, and the slope is decreasing, which means the velocity is decreasing over time. One thing that's going to be very important to us as we look at motion is a situation where we have constant acceleration. And we're interested in one-dimensional motion right now. So for one dimensional motion, if an object has constant acceleration, that means that it is speeding up or slowing down at a uniform rate or the same value each second. So we go back to the picture that we had before. And in this particular picture with the dots representing the motion of the object, the, uh, the object is increasing its speed by two meters per second every second. So it starts from rest. After one second, it's going two meters per second. After two seconds, it's going four meters per second, and so on. So every interval of time, the velocity is changing by a factor of two meters per second. This means that the object has constant acceleration because the speed is changing exactly at the same rate every second that goes by. This particular situation would have an acceleration of two meters per second squared because the speed changes two meters per second every second. So we know that our position versus time graph would have some curve to it, implying that um, the, the velocity is changing with respect to time. In this case, the slope is getting steeper, as we saw before. 
and so the velocity is increasing. If I look at my velocity graph, I see that my velocity is indeed increasing. So my velocity starts off at zero. After one second, it's going two. After two seconds, it's going four. After three seconds, it's going six, and so on. That velocity is increasing with respect to time. Now finally, if I wanted to draw an acceleration versus time graph, I realize that my acceleration is constant, right? It's saying the same value, and it's always two meters per second squared. So it has a very constant value throughout. So one of the things you should notice is, is that if you look at the velocity graph, the velocity graph has a constant slope, and the slope of that graph is actually the acceleration. Now if an object was slowing down, we could do the same thing and we could look at the graphs. So here's the other picture that we had constant acceleration. Here it's slowing down by two meters per second every second. So it has an acceleration of negative two meters per second squared, decreasing with respect to time. And so my position graph would um, get less steep over time as we saw before. And my slope is always positive, which means my velocity is always a positive value. These are always turning, um, moving to the right. But if I look at my velocity graph, the object starts off at time t equal to zero at eight. At the next second, it's only going six. So my velocity graph is, has a constant slope, but that slope is negative. But the values are always positive quantities. The velocities are always above the, uh, the zero on the axis. If I wanted to then plot what my acceleration looks like, my acceleration in this case is just the slope of the velocity graph. Slope is negative. And that value for the acceleration, the speed is decreasing by two meters per second every second. So the acceleration is negative two meters per second squared.